Hey everybody, welcome to Mahoney Marriage Sports Podcast. I'm editor Chris Pugh. I've got sports writer Mike Brown with me. Hey Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great, Chris, as always. D- great. Hey, let's start out. Um, you know, I said this last week, we're not going to have as much high school to talk about, mm-hmm. uh, but we had some of these big all-star games that happened, and uh, the, one of the big ones was the Ohio PA State Line game. Right. Uh, my, Mike, you had some previews. I know you were traveling the night of yeah. the game, uh, but the game itself was interesting. Ohio ends up winning at 28-10. to 10. Um, All four touchdowns were scored by Mahoning Valley kids. Uh, pretty big big night for Ohio. Uh, yeah, on really last well. week. Yeah, that's their second win the last three years. And, and yeah, we had – you know, that, that Ohio team was loaded with kids who made the all-Ohio team last fall. So I knew they were going to have success, and they did. You know, went 28 to 10. And and Blake Ewart, the running back from South Range, was the offensive MVP. Uh, had a great game uh, on the ground, scored touchdowns. Uh, Blake Alizos, the quarterback from West Branch, he was uh, first team D2 All Ohio last fall. He had a big game through for 166 and a touchdown. Uh, you know, they really and 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 also on the defensive side, uh, Kean Hartley. The linebacker from uh, Columbiana was a defensive MVP. He had a great game. I mean, all these all Ohioans, they, they they brought it again one last time uh, in the state line game, Chris. Well, you got to give credit to the South Range coach because I know a lot of times on these all star games, yeah. especially in the summer where it's been a while since these kids have played, like you said, it, they're all star teams. Obviously, it, there's going to be good skill on both sides, but yeah. credit uh, Dave Ross of South Range for drawing his kids together and he had more ready to play and he had the big win. Yeah. And he, you know, I think that they did something interesting this year too. Tim Cooper of West Branch was the offensive coordinator. His quarterback was Blake Alizos. There was a familiarity and Blake Alizos was, you know, usually in all-star games, you have a guy who play a quarter, then another guy plays a quarter. Uh, Alizos went quite, Bo Alizos went quite a while in that game. And I think from a continuity standpoint, I think that helped them. Uh, you know, and they were they were winging it all over the place. It, it was a pretty wide open Ohio offense. Yeah, four touchdowns from um, for Ohio. I'll mention them because they're all uh, Mahoney Valley kids. Yep. Uh, Bo, Bo Alzos had a touchdown pass to uh, yep. Thomas Indohar yep. uh, from Boardman. Yep. Deshaun Vaughn from Fitch had a touchdown run. Mm-hmm. Willie Torres from Boardman had a touchdown run. And Blake Ewart uh, had the final touchdown run. And like you said, Ewart was the offensive player of the game for Ohio, yep. and Keon Hartley, right, uh, was the defensive guy. That's correct. Yeah, so uh, definitely a big uh, game for them. And I think we're all done with fo- uh, football all-star games for now, right? Yeah, we will be for a little while. You know, uh, before you know it, though, the high school season, I believe we start the end of the third week of August uh, will be the regular season. And, and really now teams are into their seven-on-sevens, Chris, and the state is allowing more seven-on-sevens uh, this summer. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of that's going on right now and then they'll go right into two a days, uh, off the end of the seven on seven. So we have a little bit of downtime, but not that much. <laughs> yeah. And we're talking about kind of ramping up our coverage, uh, maybe a little bit more of the seven sevens as they come by. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the fun thing about covering high school sports. Sometimes you're looking for that thing to cover yeah. in July and August. So the expand seven on sevens is something we appreciate for that yeah. reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it gives you a chance to see some of the new kids coming along because you know, they use a lot of these kids in the summertime and you get an idea of what to expect when we get to fall. Yeah, de- definitely. Lots of good stuff there. Um, yeah, in the summer, we're definitely going to talk as much um, local coverage as we see. Uh, but this gives us a chance to kind of delve a little bit deeper into some of the uh, regional um, uh, sports we've been following. Yep. And just as I say, I lose my nose, Mike. It's one of these <laughs> days. Um <laughs> Yeah, let's talk uh, to start out with the Cavs. Um, the NBA draft is this week. Yep. Um, you, you know, it's funny. The NBA season just got over. It, it, the NBA has a quick turnaround uh, from the end of the previous season to the NBA draft. Uh, we can talk about the Cavs, but I'll tell you, the Cavs made some more news uh, today. Uh, they hired a new head coach. Kenny Atkinson is yep. a new head coach. Um, I was confused. I, I thought there was a Kenny Atkinson that played forward for the 
uh, Charles Horns a long time ago, but no, this is Kenny Atkinson. Uh, he's the former uh, assist- associate coach of Golden State. He was yep. their top assistant for the past few years. Uh, he also previously coached uh, Brooklyn um, as a head coach. He's now with the Cavs. Don't know a whole lot about him. I was just telling Mike before the podcast, he took a Brooklyn team. If you remember, Brooklyn kind of has ramped up their team a couple times in the last 10 years, yeah. and they've had a couple years that have been really down. Well, one of the times they were really down, they hired Atkinson. Atkinson actually really worked with the team, made a kind of a so-so Brooklyn team into a good team. Um, he improved them for two years. Third year, they kind of struggled, and he was shown the door. Um, so a mixed bag of Brooklyn, some good things, some not-so-good things. Um, it's interesting it, with Brooklyn. Uh, sorry, Brooklyn. Uh, he coached Jared Allen and Karis Levert, who I'm sorry, now with the Cavs. Right. right. Um, it, it's hard to say. I mean, he beat out James Brango, uh, a guy that a lot of people thought was going to get the Cavs head coach. But I'll be honest, Mike, I'm not sure what the difference is with this two. Um, any thoughts on Atkinson? Well, I know this was the guy, this was the name that surfaced early on the process, the guy they wanted. And then as they went through the process, you didn't hear his name as much. And then he ends up getting the job. But I think the, the most important thing, I, I think he's a good hire, by the way. I think he's a real good hire. Um, I, they wanted to get a coach on board before the NBA draft. So everybody's on the same page as far as who they're going to pick uh, in the draft this week. They have the 20th pick. Uh, and I think that's a good move for the Cavs. I mean, it was it's pretty close to the draft, but but they got that done. They got their head coach in place, and and hopefully the front office and the head coach will all be on the same page for the draft. Yeah, man, how do they set that up? I, I mean, obviously, you yeah. know, it's not just the head coach who makes the choices, the GMs involved in everything. Right, else. absolutely. But man, how do how do you do that? If you get a job like that on Monday, and then yeah. you know, <laughs> well, like, I'm hey, sure those were some of the questions in the interview process. You know, how would you feel? Which direction? If you were the head coach, what direction do you think we need to go? And things like that. So I'm sure they had a pretty good idea. You know, what his opinion was of where they need to go in the draft. Well, and I think another thing too, you know, there's positions. Um, you would think that, like, uh, two guard or, um, you know, a small forward or uh, depending on what they do with Jared Allen, maybe right. a center yeah. would be on the top of their list. Yeah. And honestly, Mike, they draft 20th. So unless they were thinking about trading up, which is a possibility, yeah. you, you really don't have one guy in mind. I mean, you probably say, hey, we like these six guys and let's see what who falls to us or whatever. Right, you, exactly. You know, so it's not as critical that you have a coach in place more than a couple of days in advance. Now, if the Cavs drafted one, yeah, that might be a bigger deal. But right, yeah, yeah I, I think at this point they can, you know, see if there's some draft options out there to trade up. But you know, you can kind of sit there and say, "Hey, here are the guys we like." And I'm sure Atkinson, since he was of Golden State. He's probably heard some conversations. He's probably looked at some guys too. Right. So I'm sure he has his opinion of some guys he might like there. So yeah. And the other thing too, Chris, you know, we've talked about the the Cavs are kind of loaded, overloaded actually at a couple positions. You know, is it possible that one of those guys could be shipped on draft night, which would move you up in the first round? Who knows? You know, that that's that's out there though, because you know, I think there's two positions where they basically have the same kind of player. So you know, uh, and I don't think they'll start the season with that that scenario. So I do think one or two of those guys will probably be moved in this offseason. So we'll see. Well, I think you got the potential Wednesday of having a, a lot of trades. Yeah. I, the only thing I'm seeing is people are saying – I heard somebody say this is the kind of draft that you can get a GM fired because there are guys out there, yeah. but there's no one head right. and shoulders above – and yes, beyond everybody. I agree with that. Um, think of, um, you know, the year that the Cavs got Anthony Bennett, number one. Right. Was it like Kawhi Leonard? Didn't he go like 11 or 12 that draft? That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there are a crest of good players, but there's no, like, no doubter number one guy. So you might have a number one guy. Um, and 
I'm, and why I bring all that up is you're right. I think there, there are definitely trade options out there and trade possibilities. Yeah. It'll be interesting, too, because I don't necessarily think you're going to have to trade a ton if you really want to draft up. I think last year with Victor Wembeana, if somebody wanted to trade to number one, they would have had to give up a mountain share of stuff. Right. I don't think I don't think it's going to take a ton to get in the lottery just because there's so many questions about this. That, that's a good point, Chris. Yeah, I would agree with that. But then on the other hand, do you trade a proven commodity like Jared Allen to say, okay, now we're at like 10, 11, or 12 in the lottery? Yeah, and you're rolling you're the not, dice. Yeah. You're yeah. giving up a proven guy to roll the dice. Yeah. I am draft guy. I, I always like the off season where you think of free agents and trade possibilities in the draft. NBA, I got to say, it, it just it's tough for me because I think the way the NBA is set up, you can come out after one year. I, I mean, there's a lot of, like you said, it's roll the dice, yeah. and there's not a ton of immediate payouts. Uh, compared with what happened with the NFL draft, the NFL draft, anywhere in the first three rounds, you're thinking, okay, is this a guy that can right. really put in the starting lineup and right. be ready to go? NBA, who knows? I mean, even like right. Victor Wimby, Victor he's going to be great and everything. Yeah. No one knew how he was going to be like the first year. It's like you're bringing a lot of – uh, lottery picks and yeah, I, that makes it interesting. I will say it's a little bit frustrating because whoever the Cavs pick at twenty, probably not a guy you can move right into the starting line. Mm. Is my guess, but who yeah. knows? Yeah, well, it'll be interesting. Uh, you know, and the Cavs are one of those teams. There's several of them that are at a certain level, <laughs> but I think hopefully they've got the right coach in place, and if they do the right things in the off season. Hopefully they can take that that jump to the next level and be a be a team that truly can compete for a championship. Well, here's the other thing that's wild. And, and again, there's always a billion writers like us to write stories based on what they think will happen or yeah. uh, inside info. Donovan Mitchell still isn't signed. Now, I, I've seen reports, various reports saying, hey, you know, he looks like he's going to resign. Right, and, yeah. I, I'm seeing this report, Bleach Report had a report that came out like a hour ago saying that the Cavs are confident he's going to sign the contract soon. Right. But we're going to the draft, and we don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'd be, it'd be nice if yeah. you had a signed contract with the guy. And again, right. I'm and that's, it all, you know, and think about it, the most important thing outside of the head coach, I think, is that next move you're talking about. You know, they've got to get him signed. And I had mentioned somewhere, or I, or I read something where I think they were talking maybe having a, was it a four-year contract, something like that, uh, that they were they were tossing around there? So I'll be anxious to see how it works out. But I, I think that is uh, – now that they've got a head coach in place, that becomes the new priority one, uh, getting Donovan Mitchell signed – re-signed, I should say. Yeah, I, I think the two options is like a four-year with a opt-out if yeah. you want. I mean, that's yeah. some here. Or you could do a five year. Now the advantage of five years, you can even make more money. Right. But I, I'm seeing a story here talking about the four year deal would be uh, 209 million. So it's not like you know, Donovan <laughs> Mitchell is, is going to go poor either way. So. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, yeah, that'd be interesting. It, well, it, and I got to tell you too. I hate. Uh, no, I'm going to sound like the poopa guy, but you know, like I think back to the last year LeBron was with the Cavs. You know, the Cavs traded for and got a lottery pick, and there were so many questions going, do you pay the, do you trade the lottery pick for a guy that could play with LeBron or whatever? And the Cavs ended up not doing it. But remember that year they drafted Colin Sexton. There not many people knew about Colin Sexton, but there was a lot of questions, you know. And I don't know, man. I, I, I think I would agree it's likely Donovan Mitchell would come back, but, man, I would be nervous to know what to do if, if they weren't no. sure if it was going to or He'll not. He'll be signed on the dotted line. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, have that contract in place uh, before the draft. And, and again, you never know. I mean, yeah. players have their own timelines. And like I said, I'm not saying he's not coming back. But, man, I'm that type of guy. You know, yeah, I got to see that offer before I really move ahead and you know, start doing some things. Yeah, if they would lose him, I think they take a step back. So I think that's priority to make sure they get him re-signed. Uh, because now, now we can tweak some things and hopefully get to that next level. We're not a Lakers podcast, but you know, I was throwing out wild rumors about man, you know, LeBron is opting out of his contract. What could that mean? Yeah, um, he got well, I don't even know if it's his guy or not. It was interesting. 
Um, the Lakers just recently um, signed uh, JJ Redick to be their head coach. Yeah. Um, you know, Redick's been praised for his work on ESPN. I think a lot of times, you know, you watch the broadcast, you're like, wow, that guy sounds smart. And he right. it suddenly becomes a hot um, prospect. The other weird thing, Mike, you know, we do a podcast together. JJ Redick and LeBron did a podcast together. And now JJ Redick is coaching LeBron. Yeah. So, yep. yeah, a very different, I wouldn't even say strange, probably smart for LeBron yeah. to get to know JJ, probably smart for JJ if he has his eyes on being the Lakers head coach. I would imagine, and again, I'm, I know Youngstown and my NBA, you know, I don't have tons of context in the NBA by far, but I would have to guess. It's probably a good sign for LeBron staying with LA. I think he yeah. was leaning towards staying with LA anyway. But yeah. I think, and, and who knows? Maybe JJ wasn't LeBron's first first choice. But I think it probably adds more likelihood that he stays in LA. Oh yeah, I think, and I, I'm I'm guarantee you that was probably run by LeBron uh, before yeah. before they got JJ Redick. So uh, I think you know you definitely want to have. Th- those two people on the same page, and I-, I think they will in that move. You know, the other thing too, Chris, I'll be anxious to see where Bronny goes uh, in the draft yeah. uh, this week. You know, that that's going to be very interesting. Well, and that's why I was thinking if he's available at twenty, and, and not in the off chance that LeBron might fall into Cleveland, but I-, I don't have an issue with him being twenty. I mean, he's not a bad player. There's a lot of talk with Bronny James. You know, he averaged like four points for USC. Well, he just came out of a heart procedure. Right. I mean, there were some questions saying he may yeah. not even play yeah. basketball ever again. Or, and you, you know, you're in a situation where probably good for him to actually play it all. So I wouldn't say Bronny should be the first pick. But man, if he gets to 20, and again, with or without LeBron, yeah. You could do worse. I mean, I, I don't know. Because, again, it's all a crapshoot where the NBA draft is. Now, right. if you or I were an NBA front office, I'm sure we're doing a lot more research on the players, and there might be 20 other guys to look better. I'm not saying you have to pick Bronny. But, again, in a where the NBA draft is and the fact the NBA draft is kind of weak and there's not a lot of, you know, frontline, you know, picks – I mean, probably a little strange if they picked Bronny in that spot, but I, I don't think it'd be all that out of the ordinary to pick somebody like that. No. At I'll be anxious to see where he goes uh, come draft time. That that'll be interesting. Yeah, and, and I think too. I, I don't know. I'm just saying this to be silly, but from a pop culture standpoint, what would add a lot of intrigue in the draft is if LeBron just said, yeah, I want to play with Bronny wherever he goes, I go. Yeah. Because if he came out and said that, and he hasn't said that, I think his agents are saying the right things. Um, they're they're both prepared for not playing on the same team. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it's your kid. I mean, we're parents. I yeah. mean, you know, I, well, I – my kids don't need to be journalists, but I, I would be intrigued if my kid was a good journalist who was coming out of college. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I would definitely hire him, but you, it, it's a thought we all have. I mean, we're parents, we're dads, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I think it would make the oh, yeah. You want to talk about making the NBA draft compelling? If he came out and said that, man, there'd be a lot of people watching the draft oh, yeah. to see what's up happening. <laughs> so I I I, don't, I mean, it's not going to happen. It's Probably better for LeBron, Bronny, and the NBA if it didn't. But what I'm saying is just for casual interest wise, a bit intriguing if if that would yeah. happen. So. Certainly good for a, a lot of uh, pre draft talk. I know that. <laughs> so aside from LeBron, well, before we get there, um, I would guess, uh, and again, this um, Atkinson decision was just announced this morning. Yeah. I'm guessing they talked to Donovan Mitchell by Atkinson. Oh, I would think so, too. Again, that goes back like, you know, uh, Redick and LeBron. I would think there's some casual conversation that had to go on there that, hey, you know, this is this possibly could be the guy. What do you think about that? So uh, not that he would have the final say so, but you want to get an idea, you know, what your top player thinks of a potential uh, new head coach. Yeah, and we talked about this last week. Uh, NBA insider Mark Stein reported that Mitchell's a fan of Jer Allen. So there's some talk saying, hey, you know, Jer Allen staying with the Cavs will be a, yeah. a plus for Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. The other thing, too, is with um, Kenny Atkinson 
being a coach of Allen with Brooklyn. Now, who knows? Maybe Atkinson. I'm not sure if he liked him or not. Yeah. But, you know, maybe that's a, a sign saying Allen could stay. You know? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could very well. With his old coach coming. So you got two things, I guess, playing together. But, again, I, I don't know what that means. We're just guessing like everyone else is right now. <laughs> well, if it were up to you, and let's take out D- Donovan Mitchell or LeBron or Bronny or anything else, what general direction would you go with the NBA drafts if you're the Cavs? Well, if I'm the Cavs, I think I take a strong look at the forward position. You know, uh, they got to they got to address that one forward position. I think, and everybody knows that. Um, to, to, again, to take that next step, and then you know, depending on what they do, you know, if they move a guy or two, I think they will make. You know, take the draft out of this for a second. I do think they make at least one move, a big move in the off season, and I do think. You know, at least one of those players, one of those key players from last year's team is probably uh, wearing a different uniform next year. And and hopefully that will address a, a need the Cavs have. So we'll see. But I think I think they first want to see how they can do in the draft this week and then go from there. Yeah, it would be intriguing because if you think about it, um, Isaac Okoro could start number two. Mm-hmm. If you made the move, like if you said, hey, it's better to have Donovan Mitchell as more of a natural point guard. Uh-huh. Um, if you made a move with Darius Garland, then yeah. you could either at number 20, you know, pick your best right. small forward, like a 3 and D player. A guy could yeah. shoot three points and defense up good. Right. Or you could even sit there and say, who's the best small forward out there that we could trade Darius Garland for? Right. And then at 20, maybe you address – I don't know. Even if you kept Allen Mobley, maybe you say, hey, it might be nice to have another big guy. So you picked the best big guy at 20. Right. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of ways you can go. Yep. Yep. You, you think O'Cora would be ready to step in and be your number two? Well, guy? you know what? He played well in the playoffs. I think he just got better and better as that season went on, Chris. So, you know, I think they were pretty happy with, with how his season ended there. So, you know, who knows? But I do think, you know, you probably can't have enough good players at that position. That is that is the one area I think they could use some more depth to. Uh, so yeah. We'll, well, and more size at that wing. Right. You know, position. Yep. So, yep. yeah. The only thing that gets me about Cora, I, I wish, you know, we talked about 3 and D. He's definitely that D player. I'm not sure about the 3 part of it. I know he's kind of right. trying right. to grow, grow in that, but it'd be interesting to see if he can uh, get there. But, yeah, like you said, they've got nobody else, too. So, I mean, you could have a core there, and then you could have another guy if you ever start a real core or be the the first guy off the bench. So, who right. knows? Exactly. All right. So, it sounds good. Um, yeah. The other thing, <laughs> we talked about this with the Cleveland Guardians. What is it with the Cleveland Guardians? I, I will say, and I know you kind of laughed off last week. There was some talk that when they kind of redid the stadium, it kind of created a little bit more of a tunnel. Yeah, wind and, tunnel, they say. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure that wasn't like, okay, we're going to do this so we can get a wind tunnel. Yeah. But anytime you make changes, the same, that does it. Because I'll be honest, even going into this year, and again, I'm not the baseball fan I used to be, but I wouldn't have thought it was anywhere like this in terms of home runs. Like, uh, you gave me a stat. It's, they're like ninth in yes. the league. Tied for ninth right now with 88 home runs and counting. Uh, so, and that yeah. was a team, Chris, that in prior years hadn't hit a whole lot. I think they probably were in the lower half of the league, and now they're in the upper third of the league in home runs. I mean, so they that's a tremendous turnaround for them. They hit a lot of long ball. What do you think that change happened? Because, I mean, there's some new guys on the team, but it's not yeah, like well, they uh, – You have Quan who's hit seven home runs. You know, they got some guys who've uh, – who I mean, Quan's just a tremendous player. Uh, right. you know, they got some guys who are really having some good years collectively. And, uh, you know, who would have thought, you know, they're what? Are they 22 games above 500 before the 4th yeah. of July? I mean, that, that's impressive because, you know, going into this season, I don't even know if they were picked to be a, a postseason team. And, you know, they're, they've are they got a real good shot to, at worst, to be a postseason team, if not win the division. I think they got a real good shot to win the division. I mean, this is one of the first times where I've seen – I mean, there are, there are new guys. Like, I, I look at, like, some guys that picked it up, like, you know, you know David Fry and other, other guys yeah. like that. But, but this is the right. same roster. 
you yeah. know, it's not like you're bringing the Bash Brothers in. You're, you're like, okay, we bring these guys in, we're gonna get more home runs. Yeah, I mean, they've got the roster from a team that used to not be able to hit that well at all. Right. I, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's and I, I'm like, you see where anything bad's going. I, I just, I, I've never seen that before. Where it, it's an amazing turnaround. Well, I, and it could be that you know they they they're they're still good, good in the pitching department, but probably not as strong as they've been the last several years in that area. And maybe psychologically, you think, hey, you know, we're not going to win a lot of four or three games. We got to go out and you know we got to be offensive. We got to be aggressive about this. And and they certainly have been that. They've been one of the more exciting young teams to watch. Yeah, and I'm looking at the stats. Their home run leaders. I mean, Josh Naylor's been a power hitter. He's yeah. got 20 home runs already, so that's a right. definite improvement. Yep. Um, you know, it's funny at the moment they only have two guys with double digit homers. I mean, you got Naylor of 20, yeah. Ramirez of 19, but they've yep. got a bunch of guys from like five to nine. Right, and Juan runs. has seven, and he he missed time with an injury. You know, so, uh, you know, they've got a yeah. lot of guys collectively, and they've got a lot of guys that can hurt you with the long ball all of a sudden. So. Well, and then, you know, the big question comes up. I, th- I th- still think we have a little bit of time for the trade deadline. What do you do during the trade deadline? And there's some definite yeah. talk that they're willing to do something, but what yeah. is it, you know? Well, I think as far as offense, I think – I don't think they want to upset the apple cart there, but – you know they have had some injuries in their you know their staff and their relief staff as well, and uh, maybe that's something where you you add a, a depth piece there, either as a starter or a reliever, uh, depending on when some of these other guys come back from injuries. Yeah, but I mean you look at I, I mean I look at Stephen Kwan. He's never been a poor hitter, but man, 2022 hit 298, uh, 2023 hit 268. Yeah. Now he's hitting 390. Yeah. I mean, there's some, yeah, there's some wild, uh, you know, fluctuations. I, yeah. Is it the tunnel? Is it something else? I mean, <laughs> I you don't know. know. That's a good question. But the, he, the Guardians are really, they've really been an exciting team to watch. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at with the home runs. I mean, he's never been a poor, poor home run hitter, but his previous career high was six. Yeah, in 2022, and that came in five and six to three at bats. Yeah. He's already had his his right. major league lead, and he did in 200 at bats. And and we still got three plus months to go in the season. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm seeing highlights. I'm, I've got the ESPN and uh, video pops up and shows some highlights. All these home runs are going to the right hand side. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. Maybe so. something, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, they just have a video of highlights, and uh, I'm seeing all these home runs going in the right side. So, who, who knows? And again, I, I don't know. Don't call me on it. And I'm sure somebody's out there looking at real stats, going, "That's not true," but it make it makes you wonder sometimes. Yeah. So it's like uh, when you play in Denver, and they say in the light air, you know, and the Broncos are using yeah. that. So, who knows if it if it really is a factor or not? But hey, if it works for the Guardians, more power to them. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, the other thing, um, you know, on the subject of baseball, it, it, it's funny. And, well, let's ask about the Guardians first, and we'll talk about departure real quick afterwards. I'm seeing a message board for the Guardians. And, again, Guardians are winning. I mean, who cares if our show talks about you or ESPN talks about you a lot? You're winning. I mean, that's the most important yeah. thing. But a lot of people think – the Guardians are under the radar. Is it just because not much was expected from them? Or it, it just sounds like nat- nationally they're not getting as much buzz as you would think. Right. I think maybe after the uh, All-Star break, that you know, when, now when the races are really heating up, uh, and if they're still up, which I think they will be. I think this team, you know, they've really been consistent. You know, they haven't had many streaks where they've lost series. They've been very consistent. Um, and uh, you know, I think their manager would be a great candidate for manager of the year if this continues. He's done a great job. Uh, so I don't know. I, well, I'll be anxious to see uh, when we get to August and you know things are really heating up. You know how things go, but you know so far so good with them. They they they're impressive. They're exciting. You know you can tell by you know they're drawn good crowds in Cleveland to see the Guardians now. Really good crowds. I mean yeah. So 
He had some salads over the weekend. They just swapped the yep. uh, yep. Blue Jays. Right. I, I'm kind of wondering, too, like, you think about this even back in the 90s when things were golden. They talked about how you got that buzz once the weather turned warm. Yeah. And I'm wondering, too, nationally, and, and get, you know, obviously it's different, a home attendance versus national attention. But, you know, we, we just got done with the NBA season. We're taping this on Monday. Game seven of the uh, Stanley Cup Finals are tonight. So, I mean, after both of those seasons are over, now baseball kind of becomes the main sport, at right. least for a few months before NFL. So, I'm, I'm thinking you might see some more attention because on these sports shows, you know, baseball is going to attract more attention over the next couple of months either way. So, yeah. Yeah. you're looking for the good stories. As you said, the um, Guardians are that good story. They really are. And, and the Pirates are interesting. I, I wouldn't, I, I don't have the playoff expectations for the Pirates, but if you talk about people that are easy to talk about, you know, with Paul Skeens and Jones yeah. and everything, oh, yeah. it, it, it's been a fun team to watch. I mean, I wouldn't expect a World Series to come to Pittsburgh this year, but it's been Man, they've attracted buzz if nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of talk nationally about like uh, schemes, especially. Yeah. yeah, and the nice thing about these teams, you know, the the Pirates and the Guardians is, you know, these are low budget teams. These are teams that, you know, the low the lower revenue teams, and uh, and they're doing pretty well. They've got they've got some exciting players, and you know, with the Guardians, you know, look what they're doing in in the uh, American League uh, Central. So you know, it's it's fun. It's it those are kind of uh, feel good stories. You like to see you root for teams like that and guys like that uh, who come in. Maybe maybe it might be the underdogs to start with, and you see them having great seasons, and that's that's really a cool story. Very good. So, all right. Well, I think that's what's what we got uh, for now. Just a reminder, um, Mahoney Matters, check us out each day. I, I will tell you. Um, our newsletters have looked a little bit differently recently. We're in the process of switching over uh, to a new company for newsletters. We're excited about it. Uh, it should have a better look to the daily newsletter. Uh, we're also talking about the possibility of adding a couple of uh, newsletters, hopefully sports. Uh, we had a conversation about that today. Uh, so, yeah, be patient with us as we uh, navigate our newsletter um, situation we've been going for this summer. Uh, but also, too, um, Consider supporting us. Um, we are a free website. Uh, we want to make our news available for everyone. Um, but obviously, we get paid through uh, the people that come to our website. Um, we do ads where if you click on the ad, it helps us out. Or if you click on stories, it'll help us out. So if you can't help us financially, just look at our website every day. Um, share us with your friends. If you can help us financially, we'd appreciate that too. Um, we It's a tax deductible donation. Um, sometimes I know in the past with news, you know, if you help them out, it's you're buying a service, you're buying a product. Same thing here, but we operate as a nonprofit. So it's a tax deductible donation you can have. It helps us not just keep who we have, but grow our business. Um, we've been able to grow with what we do and what we cover. We want to keep doing that. So. Um, yeah, just think about us. Um, there's links to help us out uh, with each of, of our local stories you see. All right. Well, Mike, as always, thanks again for um, swinging by. Have a great week. Um, and for Mike, this is Chris. Have a great um, week, everybody.